Hi, welcome to Triple ECP 64 Lab 1 Part 3, how to build the initial circuit for this lab. In this video, we're going to go over how to do the continuity of the breadboard, the zip resistor, the layout, and then how to measure that zip resistor, how to build the LED circuit, as well as the switch circuit, how to build the TTL gate circuit, and then connecting everything together. So first step we're going to do is we're going to check the continuity of the breadboard. If this is the first time you've used this breadboard, it's critical that we want to check the continuity. As, as you can note in these two images, the, rail, the power rails might be slightly different. In this case, how this one is broken across, and this one is continuous all the way across. So make sure you check the continuity of the breadboard, and most of the time in the lab, we're only dealing with one type of voltage or to reference the ground. So we can just simply jump wires across to each of these rails. Next, the SIP resistor. So as talked about in previous videos, you may have two different layouts, the bus or isolated. The bus resistor path has all of the pins except for one are all connected together to a single bus or rail to a single pin. This pin is usually noted by marking like a dot or some other type of strip. The isolated has a, each individual resistor is connected to the adjacent pin. So as you can see here in pin one, we have this resistor is only connected to here. None of the other pins are connected to that single resistor. So each resistor is isolated. Next, we're going to go over how to measure and then check and verify which resistor layout and value we have. So measuring a SIP resistor. What we do is we're going to hook up our, or we're going to wire up our multimeter, set it to the ohm set, resistance, measuring the resistance set, setting at 2000 ohms. And then we're going to take each lead and connect it to the opposite end. At this time, if you see a value appear, that usually means that we have a, I, we have a bus resistor. If you don't, like a, if you just see a one, that usually says that we have an isolated. Now, that's a simple way we can check to verify which resistor layout we have, as well as measurement. As you can see here, we have two different examples. This example is an example of the isolated resistor. I do the same test as we shown in the previous slide, and as you can see, we have a one up here. This usually means infinite resistance. In this example, I just take the lead to the adjacent pin, and then I can see I actually have the 347 ohm resistance. Here, I test the same thing against a different SIP resistor pack, and as you can see, I have the same, roughly the same resistance across the, the adjacent pin and the opposite pin on the other side. It's important to note that whatever one you have is probably fine. The bus is going to be easier when we wire this circuit up. If you do have an isolated, just simply treat it as wiring an individual resistor as you've done in the previous lab. Building the LED and switch circuit. So the first circuit we'll go over is how to build a switch circuit. So from here, what we're going to do is we're going to place our switch in the center of our breadboard across the chip valley here. Now, as we do this, we're going to wire power uh, wires to our power rail across to each individual switch. And from there, we're going to take our 1K ohm SIP resistor pack and we're going to place it to the opposite side here of our breadboard. Now, it's important to note that we're going to offset this one by one pin. And the pin that we want to offset it by, we should have the marking. So in this example, I have the black SIP resistor, and you can see the white dot located here. That, that marking we're going to then take is wire that up to the ground rail on the opposite side. So it's important to note that you have the 1K ohm resistor and that this is offset by one. It's a common mistake that a lot of people do is they, off, they accidentally place this directly in line with the SIP resistor, and we don't want that. It's also important to note that the, as we want, go through our, our circuit, we start maybe on the power rail, we go across, we come to the side of the switch, on the opposite pin on this side of the switch, we should have a continuous line here to the SIP resistor pack. Make sure we don't forget this, especially the 1K ohm resistor. This will become apparent if you wire up later TTL gates and the internal value, if the output looks different than what the chip actually says. It does affect the internal aspects of the chip. Good. Now from here, we'll cover is the LED circuit. The LED circuit, we're gonna place again in the center of the breadboard, and we're gonna pla place the notch on the same side that has the output of our switch. From there, we're gonna place the 330 ohm resistor, again, offset by one pin, and wire that a wire across the breadboard all the way to the power rail. So important thing to note is making sure that the notch, which is our an anode side, or the side we're gonna place the output of our TTL gate or switch to. From there, it's also important to note that the SIP resistor pack we have is a 330 ohm resistor. Now, from there, putting it all together and testing the circuit. As you notice, I placed my circuits on opposite sides of the breadboard. This is important as we start to lay down the TTL gates through part one and then part, uh, part three and part four of this lab. So 
From here, once you have everything wired, have your instructor check your circuit to verify it's working properly, and then from there, provide power, run wires across to either side of the LED video, uh, the, the LED LEDs, and then from there, flip the switches. See if they come on. If this doesn't work before you wire up your TTL gates, then you need to make sure you fix it. This will make debugging easier, because in later parts, if you start building up the TTL gates and they don't work, we know the problem is isolated simply to the TTL gates loaded, located here. Next, the TTL gate circuit. As you can see here, this is the pinout of a TTL NAND gate 74000 series circuit, or chip. We have two inputs and one output. We have to provide a 5 volts to one pin and a ground to another. Now, in this example, I flip my chip simply so I can have my inputs and outputs on the same side that on the LED uh, on the uh, sorry the LED and switch circuit to make it a little easier for wiring. And you'll see this in the next video, the next step. From here, the important thing to know which side your pin is and which one's power and which one ground is looking at the notch. So you can see here in this pinout we have a notch. In this, it's hard to tell in this image, but there's a notch located right here. So that means that my ground, which is here because it's opposite side of the notch. So if I look here, my notch is here. My ground pin is on the other side, is here on this pin. My power, which is right next to the notch, right here, is right here. Since I'm using this circuit down below, we're gonna wire up two, our two, output, or, sorry, two inputs and then our output. So my two inputs, which are these two pins in this example, and then wiring up my output. It's important to kind of double check this a few times. It's easy to mix up your inputs and output pins, as well as mix up your ICs if you have an inverter, because that's only going to take one input. Now putting everything together. Simply take your take the side of the, uh, the switch, as you see in the red wires, and wire those up. And then from there, take the output and wire that directly up to the LED bar graph. It's important to note that in this video, I just placed a single TTL gate, but it's good to place each of the TTL gates down first and make sure that you have enough space between them and then from there, powering, up, wiring up the power and ground rails. Again, double check with your instructor before you provide power to your circuit to verify you don't have any issues, so you don't break, don't fry any of your chips or as any of your LEDs. Thank you for watching uh, the video. If you have any concerns or questions, or you notice any mistakes, please contact us. You can email us at csusieee at gmail.com, or you can talk to any IEEE student representative here at Sac State. Look for more videos and hope to see hope to see you again soon.